As you know, this summer is slipping away from us. It's already the second half of August. I feel like 2023 has been the fastest year I've ever lived. So to make your summer a little bit more memorable, I found five of the most creative watermelon hacks for you to do. The first one is a TikTok hack of infusing a watermelon with a bottle of vodka. It looks pretty interesting, so let's get started. This recipe requires 24 hours of soaking, so we started last night by removing the rotten part of the watermelon. These black spots are said to be extremely toxic bacteria that can make you really sick. They also make the entire watermelon unsafe to eat. Putting vodka into it immediately solves this issue because alcohol helps to numb your stomach pain. This is the vodka we're using today. It's absolute. So we'll basically dig out a little insertion hole and then just stab the whole bottle into it. And then we'll simply just turn it upside down, keep it on the tray, and then store it in the fridge for at least 24 hours. Later. This is what it looks like the next day. Seems like the alcohol reduced a little bit. The ideal results I'm hoping for is that both the watermelon and the vodka has imposed flavors upon each other. This doesn't look really natural. Let's cut it open and see how it did. It seems like the color of the watermelon deepened a lot, especially around the area where the vodka was. But we have to taste it to find out. I know a lot of you like watermelon ASMR, so here we go. Here's a message to the ladies, if your man doesn't offer you this bite, leave him ASAP. That ain't true love. Now I'm gonna taste it and give you the inside scoop. <laughs> You know, I failed the second law of thermodynamics in high school, but today, the second law of thermodynamics failed me. There's no additional flavor whatsoever. I feel like the vodka didn't flow into it at all. Let's taste the vodka to see if there's any watermelon flavors. Great. Not only did I not taste any flavor, I'm gonna be drunk soon and have to stop filming for today. I rewatched the original video and the only difference I had was the size of the vodka bottle. Maybe if the bottle's deeper, it provides more pressure to push the alcohol into the watermelon. But overall, I'm gonna give this a 3 out of 10. So if you know what I did wrong, let me know in the comment section. Moving on to our second hack. I was today years old when I found out that every watermelon has a flat side, and you find it by letting it roll and stabilize like this. For our second and the third hack will be demonstrated on this same watermelon. This one is significantly bigger and harder to cut, so our first step is to split it into four quarters. We're gonna first separate the fruit from the rind. Yes, I saw that fruit fly too. I'll take care of it later. Then we're gonna use the rind as a container to hold the boat shape. After the rind's been separated, we'll cut the flesh into about one and a half inch pieces. Turn it towards you and then push it one each opposite to the side. This might trigger your traumatic Jenga experience, but remember, don't push it all the way through. And in the end, you should have something that looks like this. It sort of looks like a pixelated watermelon, like what Minecraft characters eat. Here you have it. That is the pixelated watermelon boat or I call it the watermelon future canoe. This shape makes the watermelon more appetizing, so I'll give it an 8.2 out of 10. All right, I'm starting to have more faith in this video, so let's move on to the next one. For this one, you want to hold the watermelon quarter still so your knife is perfectly perpendicular to the cutting board. This way, it ensures that our final product is the best looking. And here's some more watermelon ASMR.
After they're in sort of even wedges, we'll put it vertically on a plate. This is when we can start shaping it into a tower. We'll first arrange it so it looks nice and even. Kind of looks like that 7 star hotel in Dubai. Find a stick, skewer or chopstick and stab it all the way through. Twist each piece 15 degrees to one direction and then repeat that to every single watermelon piece. Keep fixing it so that it looks nice and artistic. By the end, you'll have something like this. A rotating tower or what looks to be the center staircase of an upper class American family. This hack does look really good, but it required additional tools, so I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. Overall, I found the previous two hacks great ways of cutting and arranging watermelon pieces. Just imagine you brought this tray to a summer party. Everybody's gonna want a piece of that, even when they don't like watermelon to begin with. Our third hack is said to be the best watermelon cutting method of all time. It has the most amount of views among all these hacks, and we're gonna need a whole new watermelon for that one. Let's get to it. As I mentioned before, this is the one I'm most excited about. We're gonna try to cut out a watermelon bowl that looks like it's holding a bunch of fries. First, you gotta locate the center point of the watermelon, and then slowly move your knife about a half an inch towards the left or right. I use my finger here to measure. Once you get a good grip, cut straight down. See how my knife got skewed over here? You don't want that to happen. This is gonna result in one side being too small and the other side being too large. You want sort of equal pieces. Ideally, we want the two pieces to be almost indistinguishable in size, but I don't live in a perfect world because I always suck, so we're gonna have to work with what we have. We'll just trim down the bigger piece a little bit to make it more even. Then we'll set the bigger piece aside and start scooping the smaller piece. You see how messy scooping watermelon is? Look at all these stains. And the best way to protect yourself are these tomato aprons. Link is in the description. Once the smaller one's bald like top G, we'll move on to peeling the bigger half. I have to admit, this process is way more satisfying than I expected. It kind of feels like you're making a sculpture, like Michelangelo's David, but edible. You want to try to get it as clean as possible because the white part isn't really sweet at all. Before we continue, we're just going to put the other half on top of it to see if it fits. If it looks like a cyclist that's about to get really injured, that passes the test. Our next step is pretty easy. You just cut it into about 1 inch thick pieces and then turn it 90 degrees and repeat the same thing. And by the end, you should have something like this. All the pieces are rectangled up, ready to be shared. So we'll quickly clean off the runoff juices and put the helmet back on. So here's the part that might get a little messy. We have to flip over the cutting board so the helmet becomes a bowl. Hopefully the pieces don't fall out. Nice job, team. So here's the result. A watermelon bowl with watermelon pieces that look like fries. Personally, I think this is the best way to present a watermelon because it makes me want to eat it a little more. I feel like this could be one of those Facebook ads that goes, Do you want a healthy french fries recipe that's low carb, high fiber, and only a fraction of the calories? Click on this link and we'll show you how to make that happen. And when you click into it, and it's this. But anyways, my cousin's been doing this method for years, and this is the only way that she can get her kids to eat watermelons. You can kind of just pick a strip out with your hand or with a toothpick, and, you know, just eat it, like Yagami style. But overall, I'll give this hack a 7.9 out of 10, because it's a little bit hard to do. And also, you kind of have to waste a little bit of watermelon in the beginning. Alright, time to move on to the last one. You're about to call me the sustainability steward because we're about to turn trash into food with this recipe. We're gonna start by slicing off the waxy part of the watermelon rind. I tried it with a peeler earlier and it doesn't work at all, so you need a pretty sharp knife to do that. You wanna trim it pretty well because the outside peel of the watermelon is super hard, it's pretty much inedible. Once the rinds are in your desired shape, you can measure it to come up with the best kimchi formula. I changed my mind about the long shape, I'm gonna chop into cubes so it absorbs more 
flavor. Here's a basic kimchi formula that I use. You can scale up or scale down accordingly and add any additional flavorings to your preferences. I have one pound over here, so that's half a tablespoon of salt. We'll shake it to get it all covered up and let it sit there for about 15 minutes. We'll rinse it under cold water to get rid of the salt and the excess water. Grate in two cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, and two tablespoons of gochugaru. I don't have it, so I'm gonna go with some gochujang. Let's see if it'll work. Lastly, we're gonna need a quarter cup of watermelon juice to give it some sweetness. As you can see over here, I'm using premium handmade watermelon juice. My secret method is just to finger it a lot till the juice gets everywhere. Now is the time to add any additional flavoring you desire. I'm going with fish sauce because it reminds me of my ex. Massage it all together to get it nicely coated in the sauce. Into the fridge for at least 24 hours or up to 2 months. It's the next day and before I taste it, I'm gonna try to let Instagram guess what it is. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass it like Stockton. That's true, it is a little more watery than it's supposed to be. It smells pretty good, so let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I think I didn't let it soak long enough because the center still tastes like a flavorless vegetable peel and the outer layer is already too salty. I think I'm gonna give it a few more days in the fridge to let it balance everything out. Right now it's a 5 out of 10 but in about 2 days I'll update you on the final score. I remember talking to my mom in the beginning of the year when I first started making videos that I would be lucky to have 100,000 subscribers by the end of December. I can't believe we're already at 400,000. I'm extremely grateful for all of your support. We really are the most wholesomely toxic community on YouTube. Let's make sure that never change. Alright, thank you.